a Becker. Oh. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Made millions on that. They stupid franchised it out. Well, I know. I played Harrow, and it was just his act. That was the best part about it. It was just, it was his, just act. his act. And then he act. started letting other people do his average act. Yeah, he franchised it was like Gallagher too. Yeah. For those of you that don't know, listening, Gallagher didn't feel like going out on the road anymore, so he let his brother go out on the road as him. But he fucking charged him. <laughs> and his brother, like like buying a McDonald's franchise, oh. his brother bought a Gallagher franchise. Oh, so and Gallagher funny. made millions of dollars because his brother and like two other guys were out on the road as Gallagher 2, T-O-O. Oh, God, is that funny. And when I played Harrah's last time, it's like a 9 o'clock show, and when I go and I'm, I, I show up like at... 8.30, just one night, I'm like, I'll just go down now to the showroom. It's defending the game, man. Just some guy that got hired to do that show. Oh, it's unbelievable. And you're watching it. And he like, made a ton of money. Obviously, he didn't have to work as a comic anymore. Oh. Unless he still is. I don't know. Whatever happened to, remember the other guy that had a one-man show? Uh, I need a little more than that. Uh, Rick Reynolds. No. You don't remember Rick Reynolds? Was I remember San, him, but I remember he was a San Francisco show. comic. yeah, yeah. yeah. Who had a one-man show on Broadway? On Broadway, I don't recall. And I think it just got to his head. He he went, he became such an egotist. And oh, I don't, you were on Letterman when like Chris McGlover through the Karate Kick. Yeah, Dave. yeah, yeah. And then they went to the commercial. And I said to him during the commercial, "What the fuck are you doing?" And he goes, "Yeah, like like Andy Kaufman does. I'm doing a, a, a bit like Andy Kaufman does." He didn't tell anybody. He didn't tell Letterman. And I said to him, "I said, you know, when Andy Kaufman does this show." He comes months in advance. He used to come a month in advance and sit around the office and work out the beats to what he wanted to do on the show. Really? He'd do, he'd cast it. He'd, I mean, oh. a month. You know, most guys do a talk show. You prepare the day before. You know, Frank Smiley, Stu Sm- are they it's brothers? his brother. Yeah, yeah. Calls yeah. you up and goes, "What else?" <laughs> he like works at a deli. You tell him like. 15 minutes of material and he goes, that's funny. What else? Oh, I You're know. like, Frank, that's fucking six shows worth of stuff. He's he goes, yeah, we might go over. He's the funniest. I go, what, go over? They're le- the, the, How over? The legendary Smiley Brothers. They're good. I, I've never it's met. A great I, I've met Stu in passing. Frank has a, a, always been a very nice great guy. guy. Great guy. So Knew him when he was six years old. You sold him a wig. <laughs> when you guys came back from commercial, <laughs> there was no more Crispin Glover. Or is that legend? Uh, I don't remember. I thought he threw the karate kick. Dave said, we're going to take a commercial break. Came back from commercial. Yes, no he was commercial. gone. Yes, he was gone. That's right. He was gone. And you were there when... But but he was like, you know, well, what did I do wrong? And Madonna Couldn't have been a nicer guy. Madonna that said, Cher's right. You are an asshole. No, it was uh, Shirley McLean. Shirley McLean. Yeah. He, oh, he hated that. He hated when people. Dave, the the book on Dave, the scouting report on Dave is, he does not like surprises. No, never liked surprises. But then again, you know, I mean, it, it it's like I said, you know, the 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 judgment scale, you know, because a guy is on television and you see him night in and night out, it's like. Well, yeah, he didn't like surprises because, oh, you know, so I think for, he's like, a comic. Yeah, this he's is a, my bubble. At, at heart, he's a comic. Yeah. And he wants to get the laugh. And if he's surprised by something, he would always say to me, you know, what am I supposed to say? Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. You know, I mean, if there's a joke, they're fine. But, you know, you better not, if you're going to give a gift, you better know how you're getting it out and how you're getting it off. That, that's, we always used to say that. If you, when you think back to your years on Letterman, what, who was a comic when, when no one knew them and you saw that comic and you went, I cannot believe how fantastic this is? Uh, and conversely, who did you Hicks, see? Just- Hicks. 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 Yeah. No, never a question about it. Hey, Leno. Leno. I mean, Leno was more established at the time, but you know, you'd see Leno work and you go, oh, this guy's amazing. So Hicks gets the gig. He does his like six minutes and you guys are sitting around. And Dave, does Dave really like the comics? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, most of them, yeah. I mean, if they're good. He loved Hedberg. Yeah, well, Hedberg was, was scored. He knew how to score better than anybody. I mean, anybody that scores, he likes. You know, I don't think there's any judgment of uh, this type of comedy or that type of comedy. If you're getting laughs, you know. And did you work with Eddie Brilla Letterman? No, no. I really like Eddie. Yeah, Eddie's a nice guy. Eddie's a real nice guy who got the shaft, I think. Yeah, that, totally. That so you and I met... Um, I had a show. I met Michael Eisner to do the Jimmy Kimmel show. It was called the ABC Late Night Component. I don't know if you know the backstory. I don't. I got more I don't. sports. 
And Barry's like, you gotta meet Michael Eisner, man. You don't not take a meeting with Michael Eisner. So I sit down with Michael Eisner and it's the late night component, late night component. And I kept saying no. And they actually gave numbers. We'll pay you this much. Even if it doesn't work. Like a guarantee, like a baseball player, guaranteed contract. And I said, I just don't want to ask David Arquette about his cookbook like a year in. I'll Oof, hang myself. Now I'm like, oh my God, I'd love well, to. David Arquette is a very good cook. I just, <laughs> he cooks wigs. <laughs> Merkins. Uh, so I'm in, I remember me and Barry are in um, Michael Eisner's office. And he goes, I can't convince you to do this. huh?" And I go, I just don't think it's for me. But. I have an idea for a show that I think you might like. Uh, I want to do the Tonight Show, but just sports. Like we do it on ESPN. Because ABC and Disney is ESPN. It's all the same thing. You know that. I'm telling you. Yeah. Listening. And he goes, this sounds really good. How would it go? I go, it's literally the Tonight Show. It's the David Letterman show. I come out, I do a monologue, and he goes, about sports. I go, about sports. I have a sports guest or not, and then maybe a band. And then we do like sketches that can be sports or not. And it's on ESPN. And he goes, let's do it. It was that simple of a, a pitch. And then I would say within 48 hours, I had paperwork. It was done. And they go, how much? It, to the point, it was so silly and easy. It was to the point where they said, well, this is the amount of money you're making. What number do you want on your first check just because it can be anything uh, out of that piece of pie? And I'm like, well, I love 37s. How about 37000 Three hundred seventy seven dollars and thirty seven cents. Cent. And they're like, done. Like it was that absurd. Like, peel me a grape. Man. So we get that gig, okay? And now it becomes, well, who's gonna run it? And we go through showrunners, 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 showrunners. And then all of a sudden your name comes up. I don't know who brought you up, uh, probably Barry, and you were like this ghost in the machine of like I mean, you're fucking Morty. I don't know if you realize it because you're like a guy in the neighborhood that I see in love and we hug each other <laughs> and we kiss. But it's at the time, it's, wow, Morty, that would be a statement. Uh, you land yeah. Bob Morton. What a mistake. <laughs> I don't think either. Right, pl- right place at the right time. Me opening my mouth was the Museum reason. of Mediocrity. Me opening my mouth was the reason <laughs> that show didn't continue. So, Michael, I... No, no, you opening your mouth at a meeting... Before the show started is why that show didn't continue. Yeah. 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 Not you opening your mouth on the I'll show. Get to it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good. But I want to know because yeah. you got other inside stuff. Yeah. And I, I'm going to pick your brain in the bit of time we have left. So this is classic for the listeners. This is classic showbiz. This happens all the time. Person, Mike buys the show. Mike leaves. Jim takes over and says, mm. this isn't my show. I don't know. This is Mike's shit. I don't want Mike's shit. Like you move into an apartment and the other person left all their shit. Behind. That's oh, what it's yeah. like when it ch- – and it happens all, all the, time. the time. All the time. All the time in show every business. Network. Yep. And you're just – you're the detritus. You're left in the wake of just someone taking over. Yeah. yeah. All right. So – And great shows. Some great shows. Really? More sports? Yeah. yeah. Who are you telling? Yeah. Who are you telling? Who are you telling me? So, hey, I'll tell you. Come on. So I have a meeting with you at the Palm. That's in right. Vegas. And no, 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 no. No? Yeah, yeah. Is it the Palm in Vegas? Yes. I remember we went to the Paris to the top. You're right. With Walter. No, was we had the... two meetings. All right. We went to the Paris Both in Vegas. The Palm. All right, okay. If it yeah, went yeah. well, we were going to go someplace else because I was performing That's at right. the Paris. That's right. And I don't even know why you were in town, but it was like this kismet thing where like, and Morty's in town. You can meet him at the Palm for dinner and you can give him your pitch about the show. And I'm like, this is like the most showbiz thing that's ever happened to me. I'm headlining at the Paris Casino at a 2000 seat theater. And I'm going to take a cab to the Palms and sit across from Bob Morton and recruit him to be letter. Like- See, and I felt the same way. I felt like, look at this the guy's headlining at the, at the Paris. We're meeting for dinner. We're going to go see the show. I mean, I felt exactly the same way. That's the funny thing. About me? Yeah, of course. Wow. That's mind boggling. Oh, stop it. No, I'm being serious. Oh, well, it's true. Wow. So we sit down. I give you the whole pitch. And you just keep going, yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. And then, but you never gave a yay or nay. And I'm crawling out of my skin. And then finally I go, 
Morty, I, I just got to fucking cut. I, I got to cut to the chase. <laughs> Are you going to do the show or not? And you looked at me like a child. Uh, and you go, do you think I came here for the fucking crab legs? <laughs> and I go, but you still hadn't answered me. And I go, yes or no? And you go, yeah, I'm fucking here because of yes. <laughs> That's what you said. I'm fucking here because of yes. And so then we're like, let's go to the top of the See, Paris. but I did, I, you never even – it's so funny because I go to meetings. I never think whether I want the job. If somebody's pitching me, I'll take the job. I don't I don't think twice about that, you know? And I loved what well, – I, I love you. Let's do this on television. Let's do it. What network would have us? IFC. Oh, they're doing Marin. Oh, you can, what about you, that audience channel? You can get this. You can sell a show like this in a second. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm asking you right But now. I gotta be a sidekick. Okay. Alright, it's a deal. Take it out. But no, we, we you guys are gonna be the presidents of the network. Come on, man. Buy it. What's that? Where do you go? What Audience you a, Network? What do you got a tattoo of on your What is that on, on your right? No one can see them, Bob. Nice. This is radio. Did you do that in prison? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bob's heckling hey. for years. Hey. You really want to take this out? Yes, let's. You're like, what do you think? I came here for the garage. Yeah, I come here for the fucking garage. Tuck your kid to bed. Right. We were like drunk uncles. We go, yeah. I go, nah, the kid just went to bed. I'm waking the baby up. It's Bob Morton. Nine <laughs> Emmy nominations. Wake going. up. Come on, wake <laughs> up. Bob's like, high five, you fucking I'm prick. saying to the kid, who's the man? Who's the man? That's right. <laughs> daddy, he's over in the crib. I go, where's daddy? Where's my, and Morty's leaning over the crib going, hey, who's the man? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking drunk uncles. Hey, kid. Hey, who's yeah. the man? Hey, who's the man? And the baby just points up like Randy goes, no, nah, that's not the man. Uh, you know I'm the man. Uh, you should have put him in a fucking headlock. <laughs> Come on, you oh, prick. Fuck. So, yeah, all right. So then Eisner leaves. Uh, Mark Shapiro comes in mm. with Mike Antonoro. Those are the two guys. Yep. One and one A or one and a very distant two. Yeah. Is yeah. that more accurate? Yeah. Yeah. Mark Shapiro, we have to take a meeting at the Beverly Wilshire. Wilshire Hotel. The Phoenix Suns are in town playing the Lakers. That's right. I get thrown out of the lobby of my own meeting because I said, Stefan, <laughs> Stefan Marbury was the point guard of the Phoenix Suns. And as they get off the elevator to get on the team bus, I go, Stefan, Coney Island, what's up? And I go to high five Stefan and someone puts my arm down and escorts me out of the hotel. I go back into the hotel. I go, you don't understand. There are chafing dishes upstairs. <laughs> And there is, a, there is bottle service and there is an actual uh, wait staff that's right. waiting to feed me. In a private dining room. I am the guy and I just got tossed. And they're like, well, I don't know what to tell you. I go, I, I have always – and they're like, well, what? You must have done something. That was the beginning. Oh, is that funny? That was the beginning before the beginning. I forgot about that. We get upstairs. These guys come in and they are fucking great white sharks. They are swimming through Hollywood with their mouths open. We'll see what happens. And we'll just shit out the bad and eat the good. These are, I already called him a cocksucker on television. Yeah. Antonaro, I think, was a victim of his circumstances. What show was that? What show did you do that on? Uh, Craig Kilborn. <laughs> I think Antonaro was a victim of the hierarchy. Of he was a production guy who... He wanted to rock the boat. He was a production guy who... Mark Shapiro was a guy that needed... He's one of those guys that when he shakes your hand, he's got to put his second hand on top of both your hands to let you know he's oh, fucking dominant. Oh, God. You're so right. Right? But and not giving you a full grip. Yeah. Still giving you the finger little, grip. Little fucking slap yeah, right. you on top. Yeah. Like, I'm in charge. You're like, all right, fucking Tony Robbins seminar, relax. So we sit down, and do you remember his first question to me? Who would you first guess me? And I say, Hank Aaron. That's right. He goes, you're not going to get Hank Aaron. Hank Aaron's not going to move the needle. That's right. And That's what do exactly. I say? Uh, I'll have to, it'll be faster if I just... I go, Hank. did you just say Hank Aaron and needle, move the needle in the same <laughs> sentence? What are you talking about? He goes... Hank Aaron, yeah, home run king, 3,000 hits, one of the greatest players that ever lived. We've already heard the story. you got to get someone else. But this guy asked me, who would you want? He didn't say, who Who, who would do the best show? Who would, yeah. He said, who, who do you your, want? In your dream, yeah. who would it be? And when I tell him who my dream is, he goes, no, that's not right. Like, no, it's my fault. You just asked me. Hey, it's man. like, I'm telling you how I feel. You remember the, the Deacon Jones arguments that we had with them? When you we can't have Deacon Jones. Can't have him. And you can't have Rock Him. You have to have that's Blake right. 182 that's, that's or Cheryl right. Crow. That's right. And I said, and this was, I'm very proud of this statement. I said, when I was on rooftops drinking beers with my friends, dreaming about doing a show like this, I wasn't listening to them. I was listening to him. Yeah. And that kind of was the one where they just went, you can't really, argue. you can't argue with that. 
Yeah. Not even them. Look, the the and by the way, Rakim, first person to say Jay Moore's. He worked me into his rhyme. I got my man Jay Moore's. Remember that? And I was like, Rakim, the 18th letter just mixed me into his fucking oh, rap. This man. is tight, right? That was funny, Jay Moore's. So Remember? I go. I think what you're uh, and Barry, very diplomatic. Barry goes. I think uh, Barry Katz. I think. Uh, what makes Jay unique is America may have heard the story already about Hank Aaron, but Jay's the X factor. Jay's the guy that when he and 